Good morning. <clears throat> My name is Gary O'Sullivan. I work with the, the National Standards Authority of Ireland um, in Certification Inspection Officer. Um, and I'm here to talk about the Ventilation Validation Registration Scheme, which we've developed in Ireland um, over the last two years. In uh, the 1st of November 2019, uh, the Department of Housing, Planning and Local Government, who are our regulators, they uh, pr produced updates to uh, the building regulations to Part L and to Part F. Part L looks after energy in buildings and Part F looks after uh, ventilation in dwellings. Uh, there was a transitional period and these came into effect on the 1st of November 2020. So, under the Energy Performance of Billing Directive, um, Member States under Article 9 must have nearly zero energy billings by the 31st of December 2020. So, nearly zero energy billings or NZEB equates to a BER or a building energy rating of typically an A2 rating in Ireland. So, just to have a look at the step changes in regulations in Ireland over the last number of years. In 2005, the typical building energy rating for a dwelling was a BER of C1. We had an uplift of that by 40% in 2007, a further uplift in 2011 of 60%, and now we currently are in 2019 of a 70% improvement on our 2005 regulations to the NZEB standard for dwellings. So this culminated in various upgrades to both part L uh, for energy and fabric performances, air tightness performances, and part F again, one of which uh, resulted in a ventilation systems requiring an independent validation by an independent third party. So our domestic energy assessment uh, procedure, DEEP as we call it, which uh, accounts for the building energy rating, considers both undesigned ventilated heat losses, and we have a airtight testing, as we are you know, familiar with them, no doubt, and we have 70 registered airtight testers. And then we have design ventilation, and this scheme in particular was introduced to try to drive compliance in the area of ventilation. So the, the scheme revolves around having an independent, competent third party who will certify that a system has been installed, designed and commissioned to meet the minimum requirements of the billing regulations. The scheme is sort of benched in a scheme master document, ISEN 14134, uh, Ventilation for Building Performance and Installations, checks of residential ventilation systems, the Department uh, of Housing, Planning and Local Government have published documents on installation and commissioning of ventilation systems. And then the Bizria document, uh, Domestic Ventilation Systems, a guide for airflow rates. So ventilation is imperative as you already probably know to to limit moisture accumulation and to limit the harmful pollutants in air in in, in the habitable space so the ventilation validators role and responsibility is that upon arrival on site he will inspect he has presented design of the ventilation system and establish that it's fit for purpose he's not responsible for the design and that's an important Point. That, that is still responsibility of designers of the ventilation system, but he is required to check that the ventilation system is compliant with our billing regulations. He will then take measurements of flow rate and on, upon taking those readings, he will either based on the results of that issue, a validation certificate to certify that the system as installed and commissioned, meets the requirements of the Irish Building Regulation. So during the development of the scheme, what became apparent from the outset was that despite everybody having calibrated equipment, calibrated by an independent 
INAB or UCAS accredited laboratory, we, we subjected a, a number of applicants uh, to a control house and they all had wildly different readings of flow rate. And what became apparent from the outset was that people didn't know either how, A, how to configure their, their machinery or B, have it set up and configured correctly. Like for argument's sake, the use of a flow straightener on an anemometer was unbeknown to some of them. And so if one had a supply with a, a swirl, you were overestimating or underestimating flow rates. So at this time at the inception of the scheme and in parallel, the WWETB, the Waterworth and Wexford Educational Training Board were developing modules. These are training providers for tradespeople and they were developing modules to upskill the workforce in NZ techniques and practices. So for carpenters, plumbers, electricians, foremen, and more importantly, and of most concerning us here today, ventilation. So these were modules training operatives in best practice to achieve NZ standards for buildings. And they built a purpose-built facility down in Enniscorty where they had boots uh, where people were able to go in and commission ventilation systems, miniature ventilation systems. And it's strongly recommended that validators uh, who wish to apply to the NSEI should, should, should take this course. So as mentioned previously, <clears throat> one of the big obstacles we had was everybody had a commissioned and uh, calibrated piece of kit, but didn't know how to use it. So in conjunction with Lindab, we uh, got a what's known as the proficiency test unit, which is housed down in WWETB commissioned. And it is a, a proficiency unit, which has consists of two ventilation lines, a supply and extract on each. It has an inline uh, Unilink flow meter. It's able to have five different speeds for the fan and can deliver ventilation in the rate of four to 20 liters per second, which is typically the, the the, the range that we'll, we're likely to see in a, in, in a residential building. So validators must successfully complete a proficiency test, which benchmarks and establishes that they know how to use their flow measuring devices accurately to within acceptable tolerance. So in Ireland, we have typically uh, natural ventilation as an option um, <clears throat> for a ventilation strategy. <clears throat> Um, natural ventilation is only acceptable when one has an air permeability index between three and five, and that's very difficult to design for. So it's a safer point if you uh, don't know where your air permeability index will be in a dwelling to opt for mechanical ventilation. And it's very common that we have centralized mechanical extract or supply and extract heat recovery systems are typically what we tend to see. So let's consider a typical centralized mechanical extract for a 122 square meter house, three bedroom. And our building regulations require uh, that we provide and supply air under either an occupancy rule or a square meter rules to establish a general ventilation rate. Uh, then we have a minimum boost extract rate that's required. And so this is, redistributed in ratio of the volume of the supply rooms to balance the system for supply air and extract air. So the validator then would typically come along, receive that design, go and measure the supply and extract rates and establish that they are within the acceptable tolerances, both on an individual reading level and a total uh, building level as well. And on foot of a successful uh, uh, validation, he will issue the cert, uh, this ventilation validation cert, this is a tempered cert. Uh, it will issue this uh, to the assigned certifier and it will become part of the BCAR pack uh, for compliance of the building. Currently we've registered 25 validators is an end of 20 waiting registration out of the 25. The shocking news is, is that during those registration audits, only four 
of the dwellings uh, had compliant ventilation systems, um, which we are moving on to try to um, bring greater compliance in this space. But I think it, it underpins and underlines the necessity for this scheme. So that's the end of my presentation. I'll pass you back to Valerie.